Did you know that Christian nationalism used to be called Christian patriotism? Hi, this is Bill Federer, and in this episode of How We Got Here, we are looking at a controversial new label the mainstream media is using, Christian nationalism. There are three points to consider. The first is that nationalism is the opposite of globalism. Second, nationalism depends on the nation. Thirdly, Christian nationalism used to be called Christian patriotism, and every president, Democrat, and Republican encouraged it. Let's look at the first point. Nationalism is the opposite of globalism. Did you know there are people called globalists that want to do away with nations and set up a one-world government, which, of course, they will control? Klaus Schwab of the World Economic Forum produced an Agenda 2030 video which had the line, you will own nothing and be happy. This sounds a lot like Karl Marx's Communist Manifesto. The theory of the communists may be summed up in the single sentence, abolition of private property. Abolition of private property means you will own nothing. How do globalists plan on getting you to give up your property and freedom? The Great Reset. Jack Posobiec of Human Events Daily stated on OAN, November 24th, 2022. The Great Reset is very much like communism. They'll tell you it's about diversity, equality, climate, but what they want is total government. People won't give up their property and freedom if everything is fine. But if there is a crisis, they will trade freedom for security. The Great Reset is an orchestrated global crisis to produce dependency on international government. Michael Rechtenwald wrote in Imprimis, What is the Great Reset? December 2021, Klaus Schwab and Theory Mallory write that if the past five centuries in Europe and America have taught us anything, it is that acute crises contribute to boosting the power of the state. Peter Thiel, founder of PayPal, warned in a lecture at Stanford's Classical Liberalism Institute, November 18th, 2022. The zeitgeist, or mood, on the other side is we are not going to make it for another century on this planet, and therefore we need to embrace a one-world totalitarian state right now. Whatever the dangers are in the future, we need never underestimate the danger of a one-world totalitarian state. Teal continued, First Thessalonians 5.3, the political slogan of the Antichrist is peace and safety. I want to suggest we would do well to be a little more scared of the Antichrist than a little less scared of Armageddon. In other words, don't be afraid of the world ending. Be afraid of the people who promise to save you from the world ending. Henry Mencken wrote in Notebooks, 1956, the urge to save humanity is almost always only a false face for the urge to rule it. The second point is nationalism depends on the nation. In socialist nations, nationalism has been used to prop up totalitarian regimes where there are no individual rights. Most other nations have an honor-shame culture, where an individual's worth is based on what group they belong to. India's caste system has four major castes and many minor ones. Ancient Egypt's social classes with the pharaoh's family on top Imperial China had the hundred family surnames. In Islamic Uma communities, men are worth more than women who are more, worth more than infidels. European classes divided royalty from peasantry. Communist Party members are worth more than common people. Atheistic utilitarianism gives more value to those contributing to the state. The latest rendition of this is intersectionality, where a person's worth is based on how many minority groups they belong to, with trans being superior to all others, resulting in those on the left wanting to impose a transgender nationalism. In America, nationalism was traditionally preserving a nation where you have worth, regardless of what group you belong to. 
President Truman said in his inaugural January 20th, 1949, the American people believe that all men are created equal because they are created in the image of God. President Roosevelt explained June 14, 1942, the belief in man created free in the image of God is the crucial difference between ourselves and the enemies we face today. President Eisenhower said November 9, 1954, democracy is nothing in the world but a spiritual conviction that each of us is enormously valuable because of a certain standing before our own God. Lincoln stated in his Gettysburg Address, 1863, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Where nationalism is bad in socialist and Islamic nations where individuals have no inalienable rights, in America, nationalism is supporting a nation which guarantees to each individual their God-given rights, including freedom of conscience and religion, the freedom to determine your own destiny. Eisenhower said, February 20th, 1955, the Founding Fathers recognizing God as the author of individual rights, declared that the purpose of government is to secure those rights. The third point <clears throat> to consider is Christian nationalism, it used to be called Christian patriotism. It was as American as football and apple pie. The word nationalism was not even in use in America when Noah Webster compiled his 1828 American Dictionary of the English Language. Yet the word patriotism was. Webster's 1828 Dictionary gave the definition, patriotism is the characteristic of a good citizen, the noblest passion that animates a man in the character of a citizen, love of one's country, the passion which aims to serve one's country, either in defending it from invasion or protecting its rights and maintaining its laws and institutions in vigor and purity. Many president, Democrat, and Republican encouraged Christian patriotism. George Washington referred to both Christian and patriot in his order to troops at Valley Forge, May 2nd, 1778. To the distinguished character of patriot, it should be our highest glory to laud the more distinguished character of Christian. Washington wrote July 9th, 1776, the general hopes and trusts that every officer and man will endeavor to live and act as becomes a Christian soldier, defending the dearest rights and liberties of his country. Republican Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation and pushed through the 13th Amendment freeing 4 million slaves. He stated in his inaugural address, March 4th, 1861, intelligence, patriotism, Christianity, and a firm reliance on him are still competent to adjust in the best way all our present difficulty. Lincoln mentioned patriotism and Christianity right next to each other in his inaugural. In the post-Reconstruction era, President Theodore Roosevelt, a Republican, condemned KKK mobs in the Democrat Southern states, December 3rd, 1906. As Bishop Charles Galloway of Mississippi has said, the mob lynches a Negro. Every Christian patriot in America needs to lift up his voice in loud and eternal protest against the mob spirit. Republican President William Howard Taft had stated in 1908, no man can study the movement of modern civilization and not realize that the spread of Christianity is the basis of modern civilization in the growth of popular self-government. The spirit of Christianity is pure democracy. It is equality of man before God, the equality of man before the law. Democrat President Woodrow Wilson warned in 1923, we call ourselves a Christian civilization, a Christian conception of justice. Our civilization can be saved only by becoming permeated with the spirit of Christ and being made free and happy by the practices which spring out of that spirit. Democrat President Franklin Roosevelt, an Episcopalian, wrote the prologue of a Gideon's New Testament and Book of Psalms that was given out to millions of soldiers and sailors during World War II. 
FDR had stated October 6th, 1935, the printing of the first English Bible is an event of great significance. We trace the widespread dissemination of those moral and spiritual precepts that have so greatly affected the progress of Christian civilization. FDR stated September 1st, 1941, preservation of these rights is vitally important to the whole future of Christian civilization. Would today's mainstream media label Roosevelt a Christian nationalist? President Truman, a Democrat, said August 28, 1947, this is a Christian nation. As a Christian nation, our earnest desire is to work with men of goodwill everywhere to banish war. Truman lit the national Christmas tree December 24, 1952, saying, through Jesus Christ, the world will yet be a better and fairer place. Would the mainstream media call Truman a Christian nationalist? Republican President Dwight Eisenhower said November 9, 1954, This relationship between a spiritual faith and our form of government is obvious. Man is endowed by his creator. When you come back to it, there is just one thing. Man is worthwhile because he was born in the image of his God. Any group that awakens all of us to these simple things is a dedicated patriotic group that can well take the Bible in one hand and the flag in the other and march ahead. Democrat President John F. Kennedy wrote to Brazil's president, January 31st, 1961, to each of us is entrusted the heavy responsibility of guiding the affairs of a democratic nation founded on Christian ideals. Patricia U. Banami, professor emeritus of New York University, wrote, the colonists were about 98% Protestant. J. Tobin Grant wrote in Measuring Aggregate Religiosity in the United States, 1952 to 2005, that in 1965, America's population was 93% Christian, consisting of 69% Protestant and 24% Catholic, with 3% of the population Jewish. Jeffrey M. Jones wrote, according to an average of all 2021 Gallup polling, about three in four Americans said they identify with a specific religious faith. By far, the largest proportion, 69%, identify with a Christian religion, including 35% who are Protestant, 22% Catholic, and 12% who identify as just simply Christian. In America, tolerance evolved from pilgrims and Puritans to all Protestants, then to Catholics, Jews, liberal pseudo-Christian groups, then to monotheists and polytheists, then to all religions, and finally to atheists, Islamists, and Satanists. Ironically, the last ones in want to kick the first ones out. They are intolerant of the beliefs that tolerated them. Ronald Reagan stated, August 23rd, 1984, the frustrating thing is that those who are attacking religion claim they are doing it in the name of tolerance. Question, isn't the real truth that they are intolerant of religion? Bob Unruh wrote in WND.com, April 1st, 2024, the state attacks Christians with a so-called non-discrimination agenda that actually discriminates against people of faith. Why does the mainstream media insist on calling Christian patriots Christian nationalists? For the same reason, they call pro-life supporters anti-abortion. No pro-life group labels itself anti-abortion. Yet every mainstream news article that covers the subject labels pro-life people anti-abortion. Why? Negative word association. They want to malign public opinion against them. What is happening is called psychological projection. Intolerant activists accuse Christians of being intolerant when, in reality, they are the ones who are intolerant of Christians. It's called blame shifting, where the attacker blames the victim. They accuse the innocent of what they are guilty of. Little children instinctively do this, saying, I didn't start the fight, you did. A cheating spouse will accuse the faithful spouse of being unfaithful. 
In the Bible, Potiphar's wife accused Joseph of lusting after her when she was lusting after him. Nero reportedly set fire to Rome, yet blamed it on the Christians. Democrat political advisor David Axelrod said on NPR, April 19th, 2010, in Chicago, there was an old tradition of throwing a brick through your own campaign office window and then calling your press conference to say you've been attacked. Left-wing activists use critical race theory, DEI, ESG, to force an irreligious nationalism, a Satanist theocracy, a trans-dominionism, to censor and cancel Bible-believing Christians and pro-life Catholics. They employ a fear-mongering technique to seize power. The Telegraph's article, December 12, 2023, exposed a Hollywood producer using fear-mongering. Rob Reiner is deluded about Christian nationalism. The God and Country movie trailer presents ordinary rel religious Americans as nationalist boogeymen. Reiner's examples of Christian nationalism are so broad that even the late Queen Elizabeth had a brush with it, and Billy Graham. The inescapable conclusion is that average Christian beliefs and average Christian engagement in the public sphere is exactly what Reiner and his abettos collaborators hope to target. They want to shame followers of Jesus from taking part in the very same political activities their secular counterparts do. The Gateway Pundit.com reported February 23, 2024. Heidi Prezibala, a reporter for Politico, appeared on MSNBC this week and fretted as she explained that Christian nationalists believe that America's rights are granted by God and not Congress or the Supreme Court. The rights of Americans do come from God and not the government, which anyone knows if they have read the country's founding documents. How is this person even allowed to comment on politics on TV with this level of dishonesty or stupidity? This is a perfect example of why trust in the media is in the gutter. The GatewayPundit.com published Mike Lachance's article, February 29th, 2024. Last week, a reporter for the liberal outlet Politico suggested that if you're an American who believes that your rights come from God and not the government, that you're a Christian nationalist. Family Research Council President Tony Perkins and Catholic Vote President Brian Birch fired off a letter to Politico demanding an apology, saying Politico's reporter failed to acknowledge that our own republic was founded on the belief that our rights come from God, not earthly kings or government, a revolutionary idea clearly articulated in the Declaration of Independence. Perkins and Birch called out Priscilla for an attempt to spread misinformation about Christians. Ed Martin of Phyllis Lively's Eagles responded March 1st, 2024. Heidi Priscilla isn't railing against Christian nationalism. She's railing against the American founding. Mainstream media accuses Christian patriots of wanting to force their beliefs on others. But how can you force freedom on people? Instead of dominionism, patriots want freedomism. Patriots don't want to force their beliefs on anyone. They just don't want the government forcing its progressive beliefs on them. They want the government to stop legislating immorality. In, summer, in summary, the three points we considered were nationalism is the opposite of globalism, nationalism depends on the nation, and Christian nationalism used to be called Christian patriotism, and every president, Democrat, and Republican encouraged it. I hope you have found this episode of How We Got Here interesting. God bless you.